In the year 2000, the West Coast Eagles and Fremantle Dockers matched up in a dead rubber that was full of fist fights and an iconic finish. I'm Modal Soul Media and this is the Demolition Derby. Unlike the showdown in South Australia, the Western Derby has seen polarizing dominance from both teams over periods of time. West Coast won the first nine matchups of the Derby. Fremantle won 15 out of 19 derbies from 2006 to 2015. And since then, the Eagles have won 11 straight. These patches of dominance have been the catalyst for the off-field rivalry that exists with players, fans, and the media. And heading into round 21, 2000, Fremantle had only won their first derby the year prior and had lost the first derby of that season by 117 points. Both teams were out of finals contention, and although they had secured their first derby triumph, the external noise was that West Coast were always going to be the superior team. The Eagles had found premiership success early in their club's history, whereas Fremantle had yet to appear in a final series and were marred by poor recruiting and trading under Jared Neesham and Damian Drum. And in the first ever Western Derby, the Eagles were coming off a premiership win the year before, so it always looked like an uphill battle for the Dockers. Fremantle had notably messed up opportunities to secure players like Matthew Lloyd, Scott Lucas, and Andrew McLeod. Yet they had secured Tony Modra from Adelaide at the end of his career and a young Matthew Pavlich. The Eagles, on the other hand, had showcased some serious talent in their lineup. They had either been dominant in years prior or would go on to be helpful in their premiership push in 2006 with the likes of Ben Cousins, Darren Glass, Andrew Embley, Glenn Jakovic and the Matera brothers. And heading into this matchup, the Eagles and Dockers were sitting on 12th and 13th on the ladder respectively. This wasn't a matchup for finals hopes. It was about bragging rights and respect in Western Australia. People might be familiar with the unsociable moments of Andrew Gaff, Josh Carr and Jeff Farmer, but it was round 21, 2000 that really set the precedent for the physicality in these Western derbies. From the get-go, spot fires are heating up over the field as Fremantle players were sick of being the losing side for so long. Before the first bounce, it was Michael Gardner and Matthew Pavlich going at it in the goal square. And early in the match, it was Dale Kickett and Heath Black flying the flag for Freo. There just looked to be an extra level of physicality about it. Every contest, the players went harder, but it was West Coast that got on the scoreboard early, kicking five goals to one in the first quarter. But as Freo pulled closer, West Coast kept them at arm's length as halftime approached. West Coast led by 32 points, and still, fights were happening across the field. In the third quarter, the Eagles stretched their lead to 42 points, but Frio were not giving up. With young superstar Matthew Pavlich hitting the scoreboard, Clive Waterhouse showcasing his peak football ability as he piled on the goals, the Dockers were on their way back. Still, the game was at peak physicality as Troy Cook lines up Mitchell White. Dale Kickett again is involved with West Coast defenders. And in the final quarter, the Dockers turn it up a notch. Down by three goals, still they hit the scoreboard through Coops, then Ship, and former Eagle Dale Kickett. And Clive Waterhouse is the man to level the scores as he puts through his sixth goal. As Frio take the lead through a wayward point, the game then becomes a goal for goal affair, as a collision with the umpire left Philip Matera knocked out. Yep. Even the umpires were getting involved. Banfield then gets one for the Eagles, but then it's Clive Waterhouse getting his seventh for the Dockers. And then Brad Dodd sends through a massive goal to give the Dockers a nine point lead late in the game. But Darren Glass gets an easy goal on the line to put it back to three points with three minutes left. The players from both teams are attacking the ball at every opportunity, but it's Darren Glass again for the Eagles that ends up with the ball 50 meters out. He lines up, but he misses his set shot. The ball is being killed at every opportunity as the Dockers just want to hang on. But the Eagles get the ball through Peter Matera, who has a shot with Darren Glass all alone in the goal square. The ball bounces past him, through for a behind hitting the post. And a Dockers win looks certain with one point the margin. From 42 points down, the younger team Frio had beaten the older brother West Coast in a street fight as the Dockers cemented just their second ever derby win. The outcome of this game saw many suspensions of course, most notably Dale Kickett receiving nine weeks 
for multiple offences during this game. And as I said earlier, this really set the precedent for the physicality of future derbies, as both players and fans hate losing. Yet after this, Fremantle were dominant for about 10 years, and after that, West Coast had won the following 11 matches and still haven't lost. So what should I cover next? Remember to leave some suggestions down in the comment section below. I've been Modal Soul Media, thanks for watching, remember to like and subscribe, peace out.